Hello everybody, my name is Iman. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're continuing chapter 2 of MCAT Biology. This chapter is about reproduction. In the first lecture we talked about mitosis. Today we're going to be focused on meiosis. Now meiosis reduces the number of chromosome sets from diploid to haploid. And here we're going to cover and go over a lot of the details of meiosis and we're even going to compare it to mitosis. Now, several steps of meiosis really resemble the corresponding steps in mitosis. So meiosis, very much like mitosis, is preceded by interphase, which includes S phase, where the duplication of chromosomes happen. However, this is going to be followed by not one, but two consecutive cell division called meiosis one and meiosis two. These two cell divisions result in four daughter cells rather than the two daughter cells we saw in mitosis. And each of these four daughter cells is only going to have half as many chromosomes as the parent cell. So it's going to have one set rather than two. Now, some quick reminders of some important definitions, just in case you've forgotten. Recall that sister chromatids are two copies of one chromosome, and they're closely associated all along their length. That is, this association is called a sister chromatid cohesion. Together, the sister chromatids make up one duplicated chromosome. In contrast, the two chromosomes of a homologous pair are individual chromosomes that were inherited from each parent. Homologs appear alike in the chromosome, but they might have different versions of genes at corresponding loci. Each version is called an allele of that gene. So, all right, so if you have this one chromosome that you got for your, from your mother, all right, and you got this other similar chromosome, right? It looks the same. We don't know if it encodes the same exact genes, but you get this homologous chromosome from your father, all right? These are a pair of homologous chromosomes in a diploid parent cell. Now, let's replicate e each of these, all right? If we, if we, if we, um, if we copy, if we duplicate the mo mother chromosome, now we have two of them, and they're connected together to form sister chromatids together. All right, these two sister chromatids, the duplicated mother chromosome, are connected together uh, as sister chromatids through sister chromatid cohesion. And same goes with your father's chromosome. We're going to duplicate it. And now we have, um, we have these duplicated sister chromatids from your of your father's chromosomes they're also connected together as sister chromatids would be through sister chromatid cohesion all right so it's important to recognize the difference between those terms these are homologous chromosomes all right these are sister chromatids sister chromatids fantastic now meiosis meiosis is a specialized form of cell division that occurs in sexually reproducing organisms to, to produce gametes or sex cells. And these gametes or sex cells, they're going to have half the number of chromosomes as the parent cell. All right. And so it's going to involve two consecutive rounds of cell division called meiosis one and meiosis two. And the hopes here is that we're going to work through every single step all right, of meiosis, and we're going to talk about the main things that occur in each phase and in each step, and then we're going to review it once more again to make sure that it sticks very similar to what we did with mitosis. All right, let's go ahead and get started here. All right, meiosis, all right, of course, has an interphase uh, uh, step. This is where the cell undergoes a period of growth and DNA replication that results in the formation of identical sister chromatids. This part is very similar as it was in mitosis. And then we start off, all right, after interface with meiosis 1, all right? The goal of meiosis 1 is to separate homologous chromosomes. And so what we'll notice here is in prophase 1, all right, you're going to see centrosome movement, spindle formation, and nuclear envelope breakdown. All right, you're going to also notice that uh, um, each chromosome pair, 
pairs with its homologue and it's aligned gene by gene. So notice how your mother homologue pairs with your father's homologue. And so now we have this whole pair of homologous chromosomes. And during early prophase one, all right, each chromosome pairs with its homologue, aligned gene by gene, and sometimes crossing over can occur. This is when the DNA molecules of non-sister chromatids are broken by proteins and rejoined rejoin to each other. All right, so this introduces some genetic variety here. So what happens is some part of this gets cut out and moved over to here, and so they swap parts. All right, they begin to swap parts over here in their sister chromatid portions. All right, so crossing over occurs. The DNA molecules of non-sister chromatids are broken by proteins and are rejoined to each other. All right, now at this stage, each homologous pair has one or more X-shaped region, all right, called the chiasmata, which this is where crossing over can, has occurred. And then later in prophase one, microtubules from one pole or the other attach to the kinetic cores, one at the centromere of each homologue. All right, so prophase one, let's summarize the main things that we need to take away from this, okay? In prophase one, chromosomes condense and homologous chromosomes, they pair up with each other. They pair up, and we kind of call this pairing up a, a tetrad, all right? This pairing up process known as synapsis allows for exchange of genetic material between non-sister chromatids. This is a phenomenon called crossing over. In this prophase one, also remember the nuclear envelope breaks down and the spindle apparatus begins to form. All right, fantastic. Now this crossing over exchanges genetic material from one chromatid with, with, with material from a chromatid in the homologous chromosome. And this accounts, all right, for the, the introduction of genetic variety, all right? And it accounts for Mendel's second law, all right, which is something we cover in our biology course. Now, prophase one is followed up with metaphase one, all right? In metaphase one, we have pairs of homologous chromosomes that are now arranged at the metaphase plate, all right? One chromosome of each pair that faces a different pole. Now, each pair has lined up independently of the other pair. And because both chromatids of, of, of one homologue are attached to the kinetochore's um, microtubules from one pole, this is going to have a, a, of a role in how these homologous chromosomes are going to be separated. So each chromatid of one homologue are attached to kinetochore microtubules from one, uh, from one pole. Fantastic. So what's happening in metaphase one? The tetrads align along the cell's equator with each homologous chromosome attached to microtubules from opposite poles of the cell. All right. And then we're able to transition into the next phase, anaphase one. All right, here in anaphase one, what's happening? Breakdown of proteins that are responsible for sister chromatid cohesion along chromatid arms is going to allow homologs to begin to separate. All right, the homologs, they move toward opposite poles and they're guided by that spindle apparatus that formed in prophase one. All right, sister chromatid cohesion, it persists at the centromere causing the two chromatids of each chromosome to move as a unit towards the same pole. All right, so notice how only the homologous chromosomes separate, but the sister chromatids are still united, and they move as one unit. So in anaphase, one, homologous chromosomes separate, and they move towards opposite poles of the cell, pulled by microtubules. Sister chromatids remain attached. Fantastic. And then we move into telophase one and cytokinesis, all right? Telophase one begins. Each half of the cell has a complete haploid set of duplicated chromosomes. Each chromosome is composed of two sister chromatids. One or both chromatid include regions of non-sister chromatid DNA, in part due to that crossing over that could have happened. All right, and then cytokinesis happens, and that's going to happen... Um, through the division of the cytoplasm, it usually occurs simultaneously with telophase one, and therefore we form two haploid daughter cells. All right, so telophase one, chromosomes, and telophase one and cytokinesis, chromosomes reach the opposite poles. 
The nuclear envelope begins to reform around each set of chromosomes. The cell then proceeds to cytokinesis, resulting in the formation of two haploid cells. Fantastic. Here's and, what I found. Oh, Siri on my watch wants to pipe in. Sorry about that. All right, so that is meiosis one. Now, this is not the end. We move into meiosis two. And the goal of meiosis two is going to be to separate sister chromatids. All right, so we start with prophase two. All right, we have a spindle app apparatus that forms. All right, chromosomes, each still composed of two chromatids associated at the centromere, are moved by microtubules towards that metaphase two plate. Then, all right, we move into metaphase two. All right, metaphase two, the chromosomes align at the equator of each daughter cell. All right, each daughter cell, they're lined up. Now, because of crossing over in meiosis 1, the two sister chromatids of each chromosome are not necessarily genetically identical, and the kinetochores of sister chromatids are attached to microtubules extending from opposite poles. All right, so for prophase 2, each haploid daughter cell undergoes further condensation of chromosomes and the nuclear envelope breaks down and a spindle apparatus forms. Then in metaphase 2, chromosomes align at the equator of each daughter cell. Then in anaphase 2, what happens? Sister chromatids, they're going to separate, and they're going to move towards opposite poles of each daughter cell. Okay, and that allows us to transition into telophase 2 and cytokinesis. All right, here we see that chromosomes reach the opposite poles, and of course the nuclear envelope forms around them, and cytokinesis follows, resulting in the formation of four haploid daughter cells all right the end result of meiosis is the production of four genetically unique haploid cells all right gametes they from one diploid parent cell these haploid cells can then fuse with other haploid cells during fertilization to, of course, restore the diploid chromosome number in the resulting offspring. Meiosis also introduces genetic diversity through independent assortment of, cro of chromosomes, crossing over that we saw, and, of course, random fusion of gametes during fertilization. Fantastic. Something else that we want to discuss that makes genetic variability possible just very quickly for definitions all right well we have crossing over right this is a process in which homologous chromosomes they exchange genetic material and it occurs between non-sister chromatids of homologous chromosomes that have paired up during synapsis now the exchange of genetic um material results um it results in the recombination of alleles that between the homologous chromosomes, all right? So the exchange of genetic material here that happens in crossing over, it results in the recombination of alleles between the homologous chromosomes. And so what we see here, all right, is we have a bit of crossing over and they exchange genetic material. All right, and this process, it contributes to genetic diversity by shuffling and combining genetic information from both parents. Crossing over is going to be facilitated by the formation of protein st structures called chiasm uh, chiasmatas, all right, which physically connect the homologous chromosomes at those points of crossing over. Now, synapsis is the pairing of homologous chromosomes during prophase 1 of meiosis, as you remember. Homologous chromosomes, one inherited from each parent, align closely. They become connected along their lengths. And the paired chromosomes, they form a structure called a tetrad. When the tetrad, within the tetrad, um, the homologous chromosomes, they're held together by protein complexes. And these complexes facilitate the alignment and stabilization of the paired chromosomes during crossing over. And synapsis allows for accurate alignment of homologous chromosomes, and it ensures 
Most importantly, that crossing over occurs between the correct chromosomes. And so together, crossing over and synapses, they're crucial processes in meiosis that contribute to genetic variety. All right. And with that, we end this part of the lecture. Next time, we'll talk about the reproductive system. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Other than that, good luck, happy studying, and have a beautiful, beautiful day, future doctors.